We've all been there, we've all f***ed up on a programming interview before, and now that there's way more competition than there has ever been before, I'm going to show you the six biggest mistakes that people make in programming interviews that if you avoid, you will find a way to separate yourself from everyone else. Naturally, the first tip has to do with interview prep. There are two main sites I would recommend, the first one being LeetCode.com. Even one or two questions a day on LeetCode can help brush up your data structures and algorithm skills, and once you get to a comfortable point, you want to make sure you're also writing them out or doing them on a whiteboard if you have it because chances are if you get called into an on-site interview you're going to be coding on a whiteboard where you don't have access to any syntax checking or any indentation. The second website is not very well known but I highly recommend it and I used it a ton back in the day when I was practicing for my own interviews. It's called interviewing.io. Pretty much they will pair you with a random engineer from a big company that actually does hiring in that company and they will mock interview you and give you a bunch of feedback at the end of it. It used to be free but I believe now it's around $100 per interview, so if you can afford it, I would highly recommend it. And if you can't, they have an option where you can defer the payment until you get a job, or you can always find a friend or someone else to help mock interview you. Just in general, mock interviewing can help so much, and there's nothing like actually talking to someone while you're trying to code, versus you sitting there in a room coding by yourself. All right, now you're actually in the interview itself. The moment you hear the question from the interviewer, you should start thinking about questions to ask them. A lot of the times, they're gonna leave out key pieces of information that you need to know about the question in order to solve it just to see if you will ask. Another benefit of asking questions or even admitting if you're not sure how to solve the problem is that they can guide you in the right direction and drop some hints for you. In their eyes, this is sort of a collaborative process, which leads us to tip number three, which is walk your solution through with the interviewer before you actually start coding it. Sometimes you might have an inefficient solution in terms of time or space complexity, and they will point you in the right direction once they hear your solution. It's also really good because because it shows sort of your thought process in the intermediate phases of the question before you actually start coding it so they can sort of gauge where your problem solving skills are at. So let's say you finally have your solution, you run it by your interviewer, they tell you that the space and time complexity is okay and you're good to start coding. What you should make sure you do not do is do not sit there in silence for the next 20 minutes of the interview coding. So many engineers fall into that trap and it is probably one of the worst things that you can possibly do. A lot of the times they're gonna be checking to see whether or not you can walk them through the code you're writing and that part of the process really shows off your communicative and collaborative skills when it comes to programming. Also, it'll give them a deep insight into your thought process as well as how you think about the question in sort of a step-by-step -step process which really gives them insights into what you are like as an engineer and how you might work on a day-to-day -day basis with them. At this point in time, you've probably answered a couple of problems. Maybe they loved you, maybe they didn't, but the end of the interview will almost always be the same, which is they will ask you if you have any questions for them. Now, a lot of people might just have some boilerplate questions they prepared beforehand, like how do you like the job or what's there to do at this company? Some people might not ask any questions at all, but I highly recommend if you are interviewing for a company, doing some research on them beforehand and actually having genuine questions that you have about them to ask during the interview. It's really easy to see if someone is being disingenuous and just asking for the sake of asking, but it really shows in the type of questions you ask as well as the responses you give when you ask those questions if you thought about the position and you actually want a career at that company. It's really important and it makes you just feel a lot more relatable and genuine and it makes you feel like you're not just interviewing with 50,000 companies and this is just another one of them. Lastly, let's say you got through all those interview questions and you finally get hit with that offer you've been waiting for. You want to make sure that you don't just go and rush into the offer and accept it. If you have any other interviews pending, make sure you ask that interviewer that gave you the offer if you can maybe have a bit of an increase on that deadline so you can finish up with your other interviews. And if you do have another offer, that's the perfect time to negotiate. And even if you don't have another offer, it's still worth negotiating. Doing some research on Glassdoor to see what the average compensation like is at that company or for similar companies for someone at your level can really go a long way. A lot of the times companies will intentionally offer you lower than what they are actually willing to offer just just because they know some people will rush in and accept it and it saves them a bit of money but you will always 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 have a bit of wiggle room for your negotiation and you should always ask for more. The worst thing they can do is say no and I have almost never heard of a situation where someone rescinds an offer because they ask if there's any negotiation room on any of the factors whether it be salary, stock options, relocation bonus, sign-on bonus or anything like that. I hope that helps you stand out in your interviews and if I missed anything leave them in the comments and make sure you hit subscribe 
subscribe because I'm going to be talking about getting jobs a lot more on this channel.